You know, I'm the first rapper that was ever going to have a sneaker deal with Brand Jordan. These are facts. We had. Welcome to the big, big, big show where you hear all the newest, the latest of what's going on in the streets. Now, first of all, 21 years since my brother Big Pun passed away yesterday. Uh, it's never a cool day. Uh, in my soul, in my bones, it don't feel good. Um, I guess for none of the TS crew, it feels good at all. It just ain't comfortable. You know what I'm saying? But uh, 21 years, um, Pun Pass, feels like yesterday. Um, we will forever represent our brother till we see him again. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a giant, a gentle giant, took care of tons of people, took care of me and my family. Um, you already know how I feel about my brother. Uh, it's the big, big show. A lot of shit to talk about tonight. Um, off rip. My brother Percy came down. He, he's been playing me that Lido. I played him some of that big, big show soundtrack. He know I'm not fucking playing either. Okay. Hip mania on that ass. And so what? Um, and so I don't believe I've seen Percy since the COVID, huh, Percy? Because I've been home paranoid, paranoid not coming out, at all. and you've been outside, outside. and you outside. won't sit your hoe, you won't, <laughs> you won't sit that down, and so, I was telling Percy, and I'm going to tell you, when this COVID first started, I said, holy shit, they got me. And so I'm sitting out. You know how you see that famous picture of Pablo where he's on a swing and he's just staring at space. I was sitting on my balcony staring. I said, man, no bullets. No enemy shall prosper. But the motherfucker done got me with the COVID, huh? So I'm sitting there, people dying, shit like this. I can't leave the house. I'm paranoid. I would go once a month to the supermarket with a hoodie on Goggles, gloves, uh, lights all the whole car, the, this, and then I go in the supermarket, I sweat mad bullets like I was diving in a pool. Anxiety. And so I realized, shh, I thought they was fixing me. Thought it was over for me. I thought the COVID would surely grab me. Thank God it's been 11 months and we've been safe and we've been healthy. Um, But man, I was like going over like the stages of COVID and, and just how my neighbors was looking at me like I was crazy. I was walking out with gloves and spraying every and, and just, you know, and I'm still very careful, but not as paranoid as day one. Let's be clear about that. And uh, so that's the moment I took COVID personal. That's the moment it was personal to me. Felt like, man, they couldn't take me out. I've been on this earth a long time. And I've been up against the best of the best. And here comes this fucking virus that's in the air that could take me out. So be safe. It's not over. You already know me. I'm about that vaccine life. But it's okay. You do whatever you want. <laughs> I told Percy about that vaccine. He said, sorry to hear that.
the two FBI officers who were tragically killed here in Florida. That's big. That's a big 360 turnaround. And I don't know if they accepted it, but the gesture was amazing. It shows that he's changing. So I've been in the studio cooking up, but Kodak Black, an amazing gesture uh, to pay for the college tuition of the two officers that were killed. Now, these officers were good people, and they were answering child pedophile, uh, a warrant for a child pedophile. And it's sad that they dedicated their life to saving children and they got murdered on duty and uh, God bless them and their families but this is a beautiful thing you know I seen pictures of Kodak Black out there in the uh, Super Bowl and I said man this kid looked like he grew up he got that pardon and he appreciates life and Joe could do that to you it could show you how Appreciative we need to be. Take off your Wi-Fi. I turned it off. Is it still acting up? Everybody's complaining. Yeah, I'm getting. Mm -hmm. They said they lost me like five minutes ago. Okay, I'll go back to you. Can you hear me now? Um... In hip-hop news, Kodak Black offered to pay the college tuition to the kids of the two slain FBI officers, which is a total 360 from the young gangster rapper. He went to jail. Looks like he matured up. He changed his life. I applaud that. And... These officers were answering a warrant for a child pedophile. They dedicated their whole life to stopping predators who were preying on kids. And so, God bless them and their families. Stay black, Stay black baby. <laughs> so, shout out to Kodak Black. Um, football. I played myself. I played myself. I went against the grain. I know better. You keep saying no signal, Joe. Is that true? Or are they fucking with me? Put it. Put it on your Instagram. See I have it. Mine it goes on. Right now, mine's good. Maybe because I'm close to you. Try it with the Wi-Fi on, since Wi-Fi off isn't working. Oh, uh, what? Let's, uh, we did that. Everyone's and so, I went for Patrick Mahone, knowing damn well Tom Brady's the GOAT. And so I played myself. Noriega! Yeah, Nori, what's good, man? Shout out to a frequent friend of the show, Manuel Noriega. Yo, Nori, I'm going to get to my sneaker collection, but I'll tell you, I did not sell my Capone and Noriegas. Happy connection. I don't know what to tell you. Um, it's wilding out now. It's even worse now. Now more. It is wilding out even more. Do I got to go in the car or something? Okay. And so, it says I'm freezing bad. We'll go to go to the thing. All right, let me walk Close around. Close the hub. Let me. Where's the hub? All right, guys, it won't be as sexy, but we'll talk our shit. Shorty, don't leave. <laughs> Yo, purse, that's a joint. 
That's the joint. These is all the platinum plaques and shit. Platinum plaques and shit. Don't don't play with us. Okay. Oh, we got plaques. Huh. Nah, we got plaques. In too many plaques, in fact. You know what I'm saying? Yo, give me something so I can put this on right here. It ain't sexy. But I need something. I'll get that thing I had in there. Um, Rich. Um, and so we shoot the shit. So I played myself. I went against the man, not the myth. Two J's. What's up, two J's? That's in House of Watch right now. How's the WAP, huh? What you said? Oh, so it's too many people on the Wi-Fi, huh? And so, the man turned around. I go against the grain. I always tell you Tom Brady is the GOAT. And I wind up falling for the hype because I think Pat Mahone is... The future, he's a step faster. And so I go and I bet the bag on my own. And sure enough, I played myself. Mm -mm. I went against the grain. And so Brady taught me a lesson. I'm usually on his side. Maybe they can't hear me now. You're doing all that shit blocking the thing. And so you can hear me? All right. So Tom Brady is the GOAT. Greatest of all time, the Michael Jordan of football. My good friend, Avi, the jeweler, pristine jeweler, said, don't do it, Joe. I called bookies all over. They said, we don't want to take your money, Joe. Gambling is not you. And I'm like, no, but I'm on the Mahone. I know something nobody knows. So I got smacked and taught a lesson. <laughs> 12 racks, that ain't it. Horrible day. Horrible day for me last night. Uh, shout out to Buster Rhymes. Special. I watched the game with Buster, Khaled. You know, we all tested each other for the COVID before we went in there, seen on a big screen. And Your Honor, whoo! My show, Your Honor's turning up on another, another, another level. And so, it went down. Shout out to The weekend. Now, you know, Super Bowl is usually Super Bowl is usually about the J-Lo's, the Madonna's, the, J the Janet Jackson's. It's about the dancing. I didn't know what to think of the weekend. I knew he's the biggest living legend. He's a hit maker. His songs are incredible. But man, did he put on a hell of a show at halftime. What an amazing show. Shout out to the NFL. If last night's theme was inclusion, her, Jasmine Sullivan, The Weeknd, amazing. Amazing entertainment uh, last night. Shout out to Jesse Collins, everybody at Rock Nation. But let me ask y'all something, because I've been in the studio all day and they keep asking me. Yo, Joe, what you think about the refs? Now, I'm not making excuses. Tom Brady won, he won fan square. But there's a legitimate beef and people keep asking me about the refs. I scream because I don't know how to talk just regular. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. 
I don't know how, you know, I, 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 I put my excitement into it and I want, I want you to feel my energy. You know, I got that type of King Kong ain't got shit on me type of energy. That's the type of shit I travel with through my bones. It's okay, y'all want me to be a nice guy? Big night for D-Nice at the Super Bowl. He played the number one song out right now, Sunshine, Delight. Everybody was DMing me, yo, D-Nice played your shit. It's an amazing feeling. Two J's. Y'all don't know who Two J's is. I had him on the show. Young man was homeless. He started a business selling sneakers. He went, first time he stood online, they paid him. He wound up getting enough money, bought a pair of sneakers, bought a couple more. Now he owns, he just bought the Gap, 18,000 square feet in the forums in Vegas. Worth a lot of money, this guy. This guy takes sneakers, he sells them, uh, UN, and so we've been talking back and forth about him coming to get my collection. Now, the love for my sneakers and the sneaker culture, it ain't too many of a, shout out PJ Tucker, shout out Little Yachty, it ain't too many other celebrity rappers, whatever, who has love for the sneaker culture like me. Not just wear it, know it. Got a collection that's out of this world. I can't wear, wait till he unveils it to you. My shit is different. The rarest sneakers in the world. And so, 20 years I had this sneaker. If I moved to Miami, I brought thousands of sneakers with me. If I moved to New York, thousands of sneakers with me. If I moved to another house, thousands of, and, and my wife hated it. I gotta admit, I'm almost like a hoarder. We go in my collection for the last four days, counting them, putting the good shit here, the better shit here, the this, that, the this, even messed up shit. I live in Miami, so it's human. So I lost like 300 pairs, turned crumbled into shit. 2J says, somebody wants it. So he took that too. But I've been good for four days straight. Everything he threw at me. Yo, Joe. 2J says, I'm the orange box king. Shout out my verse. And so, he turns around. Joe, what about these? You sure? Take them shits. Joe, what about these? Take them. Yo, Joe, what about these? Take them. Yo, Joe, take them, take them, take them, take them, take them. Thousands of sneakers. When I came home last night after the Super Bowl, when I come home after the Super Bowl, I go downstairs to my sneaker room and there ain't but like 200 pairs of sneakers there. All empty shelves. Then it finally hit me. I got rid of one of my identities. It's rap, street basketball, graffiti, sneakers. Sneakers is like one of the main I didn't want to cry. But depression set in. And it was trying to get me. I was depressed. Sitting there. I had to call the mayor. Mayor got rid of some sneakers. Joe, you still smack anybody? Because I kept um, about 100 sneakers. 50 of them are dangerous. Like You know, everything I do, competition. Music competition. Anything I do is competition. 
If I open sneaky stores up in NYC, I want them to be the best quality. I want you to come in in this white marble and fucking candles flowing and people have the greatest experience. Everything I do, I compete. If I get a watch, I make sure it's the watch that nobody can fuck with. I compete with everything. And so I kept like a 50 clip in case somebody wants to think my gun go warm. So don't try to play with me. I still got holy grails. But I figured, let me get rid of a lot of these sneakers that just been sitting here for years and years and years that can make somebody very, very happy. Getting a piece of Fat Joe's never seen before collection. And you know why they never seen it before? Because I've never seen it before I haven't looked at my collection in 20 years I got shit from all over and so it was time to do part with the sneaker collection 2J's you know I call 2J's the new Jerry Maguire you know, Mayor kept calling me crying and shit when he gave up his collection. But we running out of space. We running out of, like, what are we going to do? And so, as soon as he gets back, as uh, soon as he gets back, um, to Vegas, he's driving cross country now. Uh, he'll put the shit together But y'all see it Shout out to all my friends who call me up Trying to keep uh, Yo, Dre said 2J's What's your cash at? I need the pink and white Air Force Ones TS Yo, Dre PJ Tucker just hit me up for him Lil Yachty just hit me up for him I mean It's a big deal And today Just as I just got rid of my main collection, thousands and thousands of pair of sneakers. I'm looking at a pair of sneakers to buy today. So they got this Obama dunk that they made one of one. It's Obama dunk with the presidential seal. The shit about to go off on Sotheby's. I'm calling everybody like, yo, I need this sneaker. And so I see a sneaker they made, a dunk for Obama, one on one, presidential seal. Now I'm looking at every, yo, I gotta buy this sneaker, I gotta get the sneaker. And so I'm still in the game, y'all. Still shaking out here. Unbelievable. And so, you know, I'm in the studio and we play shit in the background for Aviance. And I'm watching this old school football. I'm not too sure that the new football is as tough as the old football. These motherfuckers had helmets on so, made out of leather. So thin, that shit is like a baseball cap. Cock diesel running heads into each other. I'm like, what the fuck? Then I get to thinking about boxing. Back in the days, the boxing was 20 fucking rounds. It's 20 rounds boxing. Man, I had to fight 20 boxers. You're fighting 20 rounds. Thinnest gloves in the world. How the fuck you fight 20 rounds? Then, those guys was making no money. So they was fighting like every other week. 
Sometimes they walk in the ring with last week's ad jammy still going away. Back in the day, that shit was hard. Wasn't no cushion in the shoulder pads of the football and all that. It's crazy because the shit remind me of like, you know, when I did the little four months in jail, we had a guy in there we call old school. Well, I used to call him old school. Cause he would come up to me every day and be like, hey, Fat Joe, I'd be like, yo, what's up, old school? He be like, Muhammad Ali or Floyd Mayweather. And I be like, Muhammad Ali, old school. Muhammad Ali, be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. He be like, come again. Michael Jackson or Chris Brown. Man, old school, you know that's Michael Jackson. You know, and so you got to agree with him no matter what. You got to agree with him because he's the old school. So I'm willing to believe that it was harder being an athlete in the old school. And so I told you about that shit already, man. I told you. Derrick Rose to the Knicks. I'm not mad at it because... We have an amazing young talent and quickly. I know some of y'all don't give a fuck about the Knicks. Say so, y'all don't even know who I'm talking about, but this amazing young talent quickly been going off. Austin Rivers is great. But at the same time, we need some leadership, some veteran leadership, and Derrick Rose is still balling. Nah, D-Rose is still balling. And so, I'm not mad at that. D-Rose to the Knicks. We almost at 500. So like I tell you, I still haven't seen. I think I'm definitely got to get HBO Max. I don't have it yet. Yeah, Randall getting super busy. He's an all-star. He's an all-star this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D-Rose is doing his thing. He just don't dunk no more. Nah, D-Rose ain't washed up, guys. You, you talking shit. You talking shit. He still got a lot of fighting him, a lot of fighting him. Yeah, the Denzel movie, the little things. Then they got the Judas joint. Like, I gotta get it. Miami Heat. <laughs> oh. And so, I was dealing with the sneakers all day. You ever been starving so much? Because I didn't, I didn't eat all day yesterday that when I finally went to Khaled's house, I stuck my face so fast that I got full real quick. And it's the craziest shit because it was so much good looking food. Chef Melissa made, but I couldn't get to it. I just ate some beef ribs and got full real quick. Little piece of cornbread, that's it. And so, you hate when you starving and finally eat a little shit and then you get, you get, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know I was touching such a vein. Let me ask you something. If the Knicks ain't go to the playoffs in 20 years, why we get you so mad when I talk about them? I see so many comments. Nah, he's washed up. Fuck the Knicks. This is. Yo, bro, why y'all so mad at my Knicks? We washed up. 
We ain't go to the playoffs. Leave us the fuck alone. And so, you know, I shouted out Obi Toppins on the new single Sunshine. And I'm not taking that talk back. And so some people told me, too soon, Joe. You ain't let the young man just, you putting pressure on him too soon. Today I'm watching ESPN. They showed a man like 10 times asking for the alley-oop. He wide open. Nobody passing the ball. Shout out my brother, Pretty Lou. Championship week is coming up. DJ show he got is legendary. Let's see what Dre talking about. Dre said. Yeah, Jay, leave the licks. Leave the Knicks alone. You wish, man. Yo, let me tell you something. You ever had a friend? My Uncle Dan's like this. I'm sure Danny's on here. Where any team that's winning is his team. Or her team. You ever had a friend like that? That all of a sudden they Golden State fans two years ago, three years ago. And remember, I used to be sick. I go watch the, ch the championship, Golden State against the LeBron and the whole New York is screaming for Golden State like it's New York. Like, just fucking bandwagon dudes, man. Like, it's amazing. And so, that's something we need to ask ourselves. You only get one life. The richest you can be is being happy. Happiness is the best shit in the world. Whether you rich, whether you poor, whether you in a relationship, as long as you're happy, that is the richest you can be. Right? And so, yeah, these bandwagon fans, they, they, it's too, it's too crazy. So as long as you happy, what makes you happy? Yo, Kenny Burns, what's up? What makes you happy is your true wealth. It's your true wealth. And so I ask myself, me being a Knicks fan, we ain't been in the playoffs in 20 years. Every year I cry. This is the first year I'm actually enjoying Knicks basketball. Shout out to Leon Rose and my brother World Wide West for turning the shit around. So this is the first year in a long time that I'm actually enjoying the games. Now, I see you, A. Joe. And so now, I ask myself, do these guys got it right? Being bandwagon fans that they only cheer for the winners and they know these guys are going to win? Is that the best way to be? To be happy in life is keep going for the guy you know that's going to win. I don't know. And so, whatever makes you happy, but I'm loyal to the Knicks, win or lose. I just can't. I can't go for somebody else. And you know, when it comes to bandwagon, the new bandwagon, I love Zion. And when it's all said and done, if my Knicks don't make the playoffs, I'm going LeBron. Because of who he is as a man. Yo, Dre, you keep saying slick shit on here. You're going to make me diss the heat. And I really love... The Heat organization and my brother Steve Stowe, you look, you trying to jam me up so the real, so the animal come out. Trying to be a nice guy, political, big up my team, keep it moving. You trying to make the animal come out. I don't want to do that. 
Brooklyn looks like a great team. I ain't gonna lie. Good for them. Now, are they gonna go all the way? I don't think so. But you wanna know what? What you really need to do is pay attention to who I'm a bet for and bet against whoever I'm gonna bet for. Because I suck as a gambler. It's the bottom line. Every time I gamble, this is something God taught me. Y'all don't gamble because you suck. And so, shout out to OG Juan. He's always watching. He hit me up. Yo, Joe, come with me this Super Bowl. I was like, too soon. And I've seen everybody out there having a great time. And I want to shake my ass. I'm waiting for this COVID to die down some more. So I come out there and shake my ass with you guys. I love it. I love it. But at this point, I cannot pull up in a club when nobody has a mask on and act like it ain't no COVID. I'm just not able to do that, guys. Right now, 450,000 people died. And I have friends whose parents died of COVID and tell me that COVID ain't real. I talk, I can't make this shit up. I'm sure it happened to you. I'm sure it happened to you. I mean, dance guys, you know, dance guys, you know, when I said shake my ass, I mean, have a good time. You fucking weirdos out there with your corrupted minds. And so this week, we have a couple of big, 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 big guests. And why should you believe me? It's because we've been bringing you the biggest guests in the game for 11 months straight. We might have some big, 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 big guests. And so, you stay tuned. And what we do here, it's impossible. It's really impossible to come on here every day for 11 months. Shout out to Ciroc. Shout out to Fan Mio. Shout out to Wild Cherry Pepsi. We come on here, man. You bring you the biggest, the best, the realest stories of triumph. You know, I got a boy, his name is Old Fresh. I might have told you this story before. But I was going through Instagram. Green Land, what's up? I'm going through Instagram and say, golf liquors, golf liquors in Miami. Cousin Miriam, George. And so, going through the Instagram, I see my brother Old Fresh Instagram and I say, the man tell me a story, he's African. Not just African, but African from a village. Not African from a city or a town, but from a village. So I remember one time I was out, down and out, I was doubting myself. And he comes in, he almost in tears. Because he looks up to me so much, he never, and he's an entrepreneur, very successful, makes a lot of money. Shout out to him and his wife and his family. But he says, yo, Joe, man, what's the matter? I said, man, oh, I think it's over for me in my career. He almost cried. He had a teary eye. He was like, fuck, Joe. Fat Joe's never over. I said, yo, he's trying to cheer me up. And uh, I said, yo, oh, he says, you know, when I learned, when I hear Fat Joe, I was in Africa. 
There was no electricity. I would make it home through the moonlight. And even then, I would play Fat Joe on the radio box, on the boom box. Don't fucking doubt yourself, Fat Joe. I'm like, yo, he's talking some shit. He said he used to brush his teeth, wash his face off the moonlight. It ain't no light. So when a brother who's been through so much like that can motivate you and inspire you, you know, salute to my brother, Old Fresh. I might have to bring him on here and let him talk his reality. Oh, shit. Let me, I cannot leave without talking about my sister, Remy Ma, who is stunting on the gram too legendary. And I know Pat Poos took the pictures, so we good. If I didn't know he took it, I'd be like, yo, what the fuck is going on here? Because she's all type of sexy, and she's jumping in the pool. But then I figured out the flex. I'm looking, I said, why Remy did this? Then I look at the flex, I look out the window. It's fucking mountains of snow. So Remy trying to let chicks know. Oh yeah, I'm in my house in my indoor pool. In the winter. Fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. You just can't mess with her. Girl came out of jail. Five years later, she's in a mansion with her own indoor pool. You trying to tell me we ain't supposed to be proud of no shit like this? Proud of my sister. Proud of my sister. She is shitting on him. And so that's how it is. Yeah, we all eat. You and my team, you eat. You look good. That's right. And we want everybody to eat. Not just my team, you too. Everybody. People don't believe it when I say it, but it's the truth. People got this crabs in the barrel mentality to where they think the money gonna run out. Or somebody else making money is gonna stop you from making money. I don't get it. No one person can own all the money. So why do you wish bad on other people? Or you don't want to see people win. My brother Dre always tells me, oh no, they want you to do good. They just don't want you to live next to them. That's why. That's why. You should want all your people to win. Because then you become more powerful. In numbers, the more of you that's winning, the better. Revolt TV, every Tuesday, 10 p.m. Eastern. We the biggest in the fucking game. I want to know who here, somebody said, fuck it, I'm going to fall into the bullshit. Somebody said, let Cuban link this one and that one and this one eat. Yo, bro, I want to know who here even remembers guys you used to hang out with 25 years ago. If you don't hang with them no more, or you don't see them, no communication, who even remembers these things? Who's bum enough to be thinking about people that I used to hang with 25 years ago? It blows my mind. Why don't you go find somebody you was cool with 25 years ago that you never was, you don't talk to them and you're not cool with them no more. Go help them. <laughs> go do something. People, people, man. That's old news. We stay in the light. We stay in the light. That's old news, man. 
All we do is try to give back. All we do is try to help the people. This shit right here, this shit right here, it wasn't 25 years ago. Oh, it was 21. Bums. Unbelievable. No, it's incredible, though. It's incredible how people, you know, all right, all right. It's incredible how people, and then everybody feels like, 50 Cent said it best. He said, there's no sympathy for winners. As long as you're winning, anybody can say anything about you. They can say something about you. They can diss you. They can come on my show and talk shit. They can this and this and this and that. You know, it's like, it's amazing. But I do stay in the light. The light is encouraging everybody to win. And I encourage everybody to win. Everybody. If you're a bad person, I just move on. Sit. I got no reason to dwell on somebody who ain't doing nothing for me or my benefit or my health or my family or anything. You do you, I do me. And I've been faced with that. I tell you that all the time. I've been faced with that my whole life. My best friend Tom was killed. Then I had to be on the streets on my own. My brother Big Pun died. I had to be in the industry on my own. Scott Storch gave me all my hits. He went through a tough time. I had to give a cool and Dre and everybody else to get more hits. And so nobody, because you was affiliated with somebody else. You was down with Fat Joe. Or you was down with Dipset, let's say. Or you was down with The Locks or Snoop Dogg. All right, you part ways. Is your whole life determined on what Snoop Dogg is doing or what the locks is doing or what Dipset is doing? Do you, nigga? You got the same 24 hours. You ill? Make some hits. You don't do something. Nobody's stopping people from, from eating. Do you? I told you last week, I don't want to bring it up, but I caught beef with guys in this industry with, with monsters. They were so much bigger than me. They had so much power. You know, I'm the first rapper that was ever going to have a sneaker deal with Brand Jordan. These are facts. We had designs and everything. I was meeting with Jordan to do a Jordan sneaker, Fat Joe Jordan sneaker, before any rapper ever thought of some shit like that. It's barely ball players on the team. It was probably five people on Team Jordan, uh, on Brand Jordan. Mike Bibby, uh, I don't know. What's my man? I think it was Eddie George. I don't even know. So I'm sitting down with them. Then all of a sudden, I get into this beef with 50 Cent that was so amplified that they came back to me out of love and respect and said, yo, Joe, you know, MJ, he don't get into controversy and shit like that. Maybe you revisit it, and it never happened again. But you ain't never seen me crying on World Star somewhere talking about, oh, because I argued with 50, I lost my Jordan. Bro, you got to take it on your chest. When you're supposed to be a real one, you take it on your chest. So you get up. Mello and Chris Paul, you get up and you do what you do for you to be successful and for you to be happy. Because everybody don't know what's everybody else's happiness. Everybody don't know what's everybody else's happiness. Some people are cool with simple lives. My mother and father, they love being simple. Old school throwback, they don't care. And then you got guys like me that are really, really aggressive. That want to leave my mark on the earth. So we see all these movies. I'm intrigued by all these uh, Troy and Gladiator and all these Roman movies and all that. And the first shit they do when, a, when an enemy king takes over, 
They rip down the statues. Anything that reminds you of the family name of the king before them. Just like with Donald Trump. Donald Trump, they impeaching him twice. Does he deserve it? Sure he does. But what they really trying to do is just like the Roman movies. They trying to strip his name. So now you won't see high school, Donald Trump high school, Donald Trump bridge, Donald Trump high, highway. He's disgraced two times. And so while you're on earth, you want to set a mark, you want to set a legacy that your family name is respected forever. Does that make sense or am I boring you to death? Simple as that. Armando, what's good? I'm being honest with you. Don Carter, Gina, the leader. And more, what's up? Can't click her on here because she does the other, you know? You know what I mean? Yo, and more, right? If we want to talk about some crazy shit, hold up, let me see, man. She picks it. I'm not trying to, but it might be a controversial one. I'm not looking for that. But let's see. I'm not trying to get into controversy like that. Hopefully she doesn't pick up. Because what we're going to talk about is definitely different than the light. All right, let me stop. So what I'm saying to y'all is no matter who you got, who you down with, things don't work out, step up to the occasion and make the best of what you can do in life. Sometimes you might have to even slip occupation, switch it up, make money somewhere else. Simple as that. Don't do it, Joey. Don't do it. Nah, I won't. All right, yo, check this out. God is great. Believe in God. Have faith in God. Trust God only in the, not only in the good times, but in the bad times as well, because he's always watching. And he will come through and tap you on your shoulder and give you all the glory if you remain faithful. Like I always say, let your darkest moments bring you your most clarity. Let your darkest moments bring you your most clarity. And stay in the game. You never know. Michael Mad, what's good? Stay in the game. You never know. Peace, y'all the biggest.